um, a certificate for design ideas students. This is uh, the second part of the briefing for the um, interpret and respond to a design brief unit, this one. So we've already looked at this knowledge assessment, which is those questions you're going to answer on design trends. But now we're going to actually look at the project. So um, this is where you're actually going to do the design project. So this is this document, number two of three. The third is really just the final um, wrap up of the project. So we're going to have a look through this. So um, I'm basically probably going to skip through right to the actual brief and then go back to look at some of the things that it asks you to research before you begin. So let's actually skip through here because none of this is going to make sense until you actually understand what the brief is. So you're going to go right down, uh, not quite to the bottom, to the appendix. So we've got to go down to the appendix C. So this is the actual brief. Um, that you're going to be um, doing some interpretation of client um, interview and so on. So let's have a look at this before you move on to trying to understand the other questions. So the job is to, um, to work as a designer who is an influencer. Um, this new Airbnb travel firm and lifestyle concept group uh, their uh, product, if you like, is um, authentic travel experiences to unusual locations and we were commenting on how difficult that would be right now. Regardless, they've approached you to work with them on an upcoming project. They focus on travellers um, who are going to go on these bespoke adventures. These are quite particular, unusual adventures. They tend to use Instagram to post these adventures and to advertise them and other social media. It's important to note that. They want to build up their brand engagement. That just means they want to um, raise the awareness of what they do and what their products are, what kind of travel packages they offer and who they would suit. And they want to expand from their existing um, a cohort of people that use their services to new ones. So they may, for example, at the moment only be catering to an older age group and they want to approach a younger age group. That would be um, an example of why a company would want to do this. So they're talking about having brand ambassadors who can provide unique design travel lifestyle experiences um, and they might, you know, be expecting that you would be, as part of what you'd be doing, you'd be, you know, posting things on Instagram and social media to build that, um, uh, build that brand and the awareness of that brand um, and, and their services. So um, the retail platform could be a website where, where that has the actual details of the company and then links off to these other um, social media platforms. So you've been very luckily selected um, as a key influencer and they want you to go travel off to some wonderful place of your choice to um, actually go and develop a design concept for the company. So the destination you would travel off to would obviously be typical of the kind of um, destination that the market they're trying to expand into would select. So that means you've got to, for the purposes of this brief, before you do anything, you've got to select what demographic this whole market is going to be for. So there's a new market they want to include in their advertising and raising awareness with, who are they? Are they baby boomers? What age group is that? Are they Gen Xs? Are they millennials or are they very young Gen Zs? So you need to, step one, pick one of those demographics to do this whole design for. So that would be the first thing I'd ask you to do. Decide who is it that you're going to be designing for because that obviously would govern what kind of destinations um, 
this company would then be expanding into. And you've got to devise a range of concepts. Um, the other thing you've got to decide is not just who it's for, but what, you know, and they're kind of connected really because there's some different segments of this um, travel market. So we have products which would advertise trips to um, retreats for spirituality and wellness, so well-being retreats. And the kind of places you would travel to for that are going to be very different to a different demographic that want to go um, travelling alone or they just want to go city hopping and go to all the famous cities of the world. Um, they want to go and experience a loft in New York, for example, or they want to go night clubbing in Berlin. That's going to be very different and the branding and everything is going to look very different for this group versus the group that want to go and see art and culture. So the art and culture group might be a little bit older and uh, have a higher education level, for example, um, and their interests are quite different to, say, this group, which is a family, which just want convenient travel. So those decisions, before you begin the process, you must make those decisions. You don't... You cannot produce a design that's going to appeal to all these different segments and also these different age groups. So decide what segment and what age group you're talking to before you go any further. So that's your kind of first step homework, if you like, is to, is to make that decision and then start developing a name for this new brand and what's it called you know adventures to wear to what to you know look at other other competitors that's also something this brief asks you to do is to look at competing companies um, definitely you're not looking to do any of these um, ones here you are looking at products to do with art and design concepts graphics so you're definitely producing graphic designs, not fashion design or sleepwear. Forget about those. Your job is to come up with a logo and basic style guide for this brand to know which particular target market and demographic you're designing for. So what age group, what, who are they? And they're most likely to be going on what? Spirituality or solo travel? Which one? So make those decisions and then think about the other things you could be um, designing. So remember we talked about um, applications. Once you've come up with the logo and style guide, um, how would they be used? So this is, again, the kind of thing you've got to do some brainstorming about and decide what actual products you're going to show the logo on. So are you going to have... Um, you know, the interior of a um, typical um, accommodation, a suite, a hotel room, you know, is it, what's, what's the reception look like, what's the branding look like in there, um, do they have their own little transport buses and you put the logo on the side of that, do they, you know, give freebies away to their customers because it's the high end and they have beautiful little um, in-house branded um, wellness objects and, and products or a basket or something and very importantly we, what kind of social media um, products would you produce and label with this so for that you might do a typical mock up a typical Instagram post what that might look like with that branding solution the name and the logo styled onto that or it could be also you need to show a Facebook post um, or a magazine ad, you know. Those are decisions you need to make about what exactly, once you've definitely got to do the logo and style guide, but then what products or advertisements would you need to then apply it to? So you've got to make those decisions as well. You could mock it up on a typical room or, like I said, a reception, um, that's totally up to you. So you'll be ignoring these other ones because they're just not relevant to, to this. So definitely graphic design. 
So once you've made those decisions, you can then go back and start working through um, the actual design process. So it has some guidelines in the other uh, appendix that you can refer to to help you answer some of the questions. So these appendixes try to give you a little bit of guidance about the kind of questions you might need to ask in a briefing session. So you can look at those to help you develop your questions. But let's just go back to say what's the next step. So once you've made those crucial decisions, what do you do next? So we'll go right back up here. And before you start designing anything, you're going to have to do this role play. So in this scenario, you've got a plan with some questions. This is exactly like doing the return brief that you did in the last project, uh, except that you're going to role play asking these questions of a person who's pretending to be the client. So I don't mind who you use for that, it could be a family member, and you show them the brief, uh, explain the whole project to them, and um, tell them what demographic you're designing for, and you know what kind of um, trips and tours you'd be expecting this company would be taking, what destinations. And then you role play with them. Um, so you can see that role play scenario, you plan, there's some questions you've got to figure out before, and then you actually do the role play. So here are the, here's the planning. So you kind of summarise what you're trying to do here, so what demographic and etc. Um, and summary of the role play, so what you're trying to get out of it. Question one, what's your quest first question? It's probably, you're thinking about the client, you're not quite sure what to ask them. So what I'd suggest is that you look at the marking criteria here and this tells you what information you need to get out of the client. So when you interview this person, they're going to be the, the client, they might be a bit fuzzy about requirements and you want to ask them what exactly, you're checking in with them. So that's why it's called a return brief. What exactly do they want you to do? And so, you know, they'll tell you, oh, well, you've got to design a, a branding solution for me. I've got this new company and they pretend to be the, the person running the company um, and we need a, a, to expand out into these different markets with a demographic we've never visited before, we've never used before, we've never appealed to them before. Um, and we don't understand them very well. Maybe they're Gen Zs, they're really young. We don't know how to engage with them. And you, you kind of say, okay, so this is the market you want to appeal to and what kind of um, products do you have? Oh, well, we have um, these tours organised um, and we're hoping to um, maybe appeal to the older generation and take them on... Um, tours of ancient sites and historical tours and museums. Well, that's going to look very different to um, if the, the demographic they want to expand to is Gen Z or Gen X. Um, and so you have to kind of conduct an interview where you find out this information and you clarify um, exactly what they want in terms of the parameters. So what specifically are they thinking about, you, you know, in terms of using the logo and branding? What does it have to communicate? So, you know, a sense of playfulness or safety. You know, what is it that your client thinks is the most important thing to communicate thinking about the destinations that you're going to go, go to? Um, then you might go more specifically into, well, what kind of... Um, products do you think you'd want to apply to? Oh, well, you know, probably, um, you know, we, we advertise in travel magazines and online um, travel magazines, so we'd want, to, we'd want to have a magazine ad and we'd want to show our branding on that. Um, well, we're going to brand, make sure we've got branding on our um, Airbnb stays, so a typical room and, you know, you'd show maybe... Um, a card on the door or on the table with the branding on it. Maybe you have a custom-made soap. I don't know. A welcome basket. It's all branded with 
the company's new um, logo, name and colours. Um, it might be the reception area, as you show a typical shot of that, and it's branded. Further on, you might decide that that's, that's, that's the kind of environmental one you want to show. But then what about, um, as we said, appealing on social media? So then you've got to talk to the client and say, okay, well, do you think you'll need a social media um, example? Um, and they might come back and say, yes, yes, we want to be posting on Instagram and Facebook and, um, and Viber and all these other places. So you go, oh, well, what's more important? Do you think you know, you'd like to see it on Instagram? What else? And so you would then, then establish through that conversation exactly what the client um, is expecting and what they're hoping for and then obviously write down exactly what you've decided on together about how many things you're going to produce and mock up the, the actual logo and branding elements onto that, whether it's a magazine ad or an Instagram post or, you know, what is it you're actually going to show it applied to. So maybe pick three things at least to apply it to. I mean, you don't have to go completely overboard with it, but it's not enough to just present the... Um, the client with the logo, you've got to show how it would be applied. So um, keep going with that process um, and do those two stages before you start moving on to the preliminary um, designs. Okay, so that's all I'm expecting at first is that you do this role play scenario now, how are you going to do that? It's a big question, isn't it, because of our current circumstances. So what I suggest is that you um, just first off find someone to do the role play with and you can record it on the computer or you could use your phone. So I don't mind how you do it as long as you're, as long as you're um, role playing with someone and you're going through the process Get them to understand the brief, read it first, and then you role play you asking the questions and you've figured out what questions and you've filled it in up here where it's asked you to put the questions. You've filled that in here. See the questions, list of questions. And then after you've done the whole thing, then you have a reflection. What were the outcomes? And what was the, the kind of understanding you came away? Did you get an agreement about how long you, you have to work on this? And very importantly, look at that agreement of creative work to be provided. What are you actually got to produce? And, you know, it can't be fuzzy. Oh, well, you know, I might have a magazine or I might have an Instagram. No, no, let's decide on three items that you're going to apply it to. So you definitely know that you've got to do the logo and the branding and you're trying to use these questions to get that information out. So it's exactly like you did in the last project where you, um, you did a return brief to clarify. You did that one in writing, something that was emailed. Well, this time we're asking you to try and be clear through a verbal process, which is often how it works, that you have... Uh, a face-to-face -face meeting with someone, you have these conversations and you hope that you've asked all the right questions and got all the right information out so you really understand what it is they want and how many and how, what it is and what format. Um, but very importantly, what's the concept that you're trying to convey? And in this case, it's really um, making sure that your questions get the information that you need from the client. So... Uh, really kind of get the person you're going to do the role play um, with to thoroughly understand the brief before you start this whole process and then you'll be able to do, do the recording of it. So like I said, you could set it up so that um, you've got a, a friend recording you or just on the phone interviewing another person. We, that's what we need to see. And then you just make a, a movie recording of the whole thing and that's all you need. That's your evidence of it. And then you just type up the outcomes. You've definitely got to type in the questions here. Ask the questions, record the role play, and then follow up with this. That's all we want you to do. And that really should be done before you even begin 
to start designing. So you can see you're asked to go through and answer uh, these questions about your findings. So you're putting your responses in. And once you've made that recording, this is very easy because you can always replay it. So again, if you're not sure what to put in your questions, go and have a look at this information from the marking criteria, but also from here. If you didn't get all this information, then you didn't have the right questions. So, you know, you've got to ask them who the target audience is, what are they expecting in terms of the branding, what's it supposed to communicate, is there a design style um, that they are, uh, are considering, you know, if they've got any examples they want to show you, the, the things that they think might work, and functional considerations. So, you know, um, what, do they, what do they need, how big does it have to be, you know, if it's a magazine ad, is it print or is it web? Um, so anything functional, um, number of colours and so on. Um, so you're getting some very detailed information before you start and you're also talking about um, here how you're planning to manage the project. So um, if you're not sure when you get up to this point what to put in there, we can have further one-on-one -on -one discussions about that. Um, and then it does go on to talk about um, researching some competitors and that's before, again, before you start, it's a really good idea to have researched at least a couple of um, competitors. And then we'll go on to a bit further with these, these other questions. But I think the most important thing is to do the role play, to figure out the questions beforehand, do the role play and record that. And when you've done that, then we'll talk about the next stage of the actual development of the, of the initial concepts and through to making the style guide. And I have a template, an illustrated template, which is like a mini style guide, which you can use for the actual development of the style guide. So that part won't be um, difficult in terms of how you present it. That'll be pretty straightforward. So I'm going to stop now because that's really long enough. And um, you can replay this and hopefully it will help you understand the project and um, understand how you're going to um, present that role play because obviously we wouldn't normally do this in class. Um, but I think, you know, you can step through this process with anybody because the client, um, they know what they want but they don't necessarily know the details until they're asked very specific questions. So that way I think it's going to be just as effective for you to use anybody as long as you've given them the information and, and explained to them that they need to pretend to be the client and they, we go through these questions with them and it will give you a bit of practice and confidence in asking questions and being prepared for a phone interview or prepared for um, a one-on-one -on -one meeting with a client um, which you can end up thinking you understand what they've asked, but uh, if you didn't have your questions ready, and t these questions you're learning to ask here are very typical for any design job. So once you've done it once, the whole process becomes a lot easier and you'd find you'd be able to ask these kind of questions for any design job and get the information, be very efficient in getting the information so you don't need to do heaps of follow-up phone calls and emails and pestering them. You really, really understood it from the start. Okay, um, good luck with the role play. I look forward to seeing your recordings of the role play. Um, email me if you've got any further questions about it or if you're having trouble.